Can you believe it's now been 15 years since the release of Windows 7? Alongside maybe Windows XP is one of the more fondly remembered ones. Maybe because it's just the one you grew up with the most. Or maybe because it's the one you spend the longest staring at when in school or at work developing a sort of Stockholm Syndrome. And to demonstrate how long lasting it was in those areas, my school still used Windows 7 in its computer labs until the point I left in 2020. So let's go back and remember what made Windows 7 so special and what it's even like to use it today. Man, it's been a while since I've seen this screen and already this just seems so... I, I'm almost scared to say retro at this point, but it's just so quaint by comparison. Look at it, there's birds, there's butterflies, it's all just so happy and innocent as compared to the ultra minimalist dystopian UIs we have now. Now obviously one of the big things that made Windows 7 such an appealing option at the time was what came before it. Windows Vista, while not as bad as its reputation has made out to be, still had many issues and wasn't super stable as it migrated from the ways of old of Windows XP into the era of modernity and wait a second, What's even different here? I mean, when you look at Vista and 7 right next to each other, they don't really look that different. And okay, there were some cosmetic changes between the two, making the Arrow design of 7 a lot more refined and also generally bringing it up to date. It's a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that really made 7 so special, starting off with performance. Stability was a huge issue and a lot of that was resolved with 7. We also saw other big changes, like overall improvements in the utilization of multi-core CPUs, better support for these fancy new things called solid state drives or SSDs or I think they're called something like that, plus much better support for virtual machines and virtual disks and even support for up to 192 gigabytes of RAM on the Pro version, which I know that even to this day is just a ludicrous amount to even the average user, but still that's a point for 7 I guess. And of course we can't forget the big thing that happened for gamers, the release of DirectX 11, which okay sure while it was also backported to Vista after the fact, still it launched with 7 and it saw major changes about how developers made and ran their games. The X11 had such a huge impact and it's probably still the version of Microsoft's API you're still using on most of your games to this day. Now speaking of games, unfortunately 3D Space Pinball is no longer available with this version of Windows, but we did get Minesweeper and wait, really? This is what Minesweeper for Windows 7 looked like? I had no idea, I've never actually played this version, I had no idea it looked so ugly when compared to the, like, the classic version. That's, that's bad. Anyway. But going back to the overall design of it, Windows 7 also got rid of a lot of unpopular experiments that they shipped with Vista. Because in a lot of ways, Vista was just that kind of middle ground between the days of old, old hardware and old software from the XP days, and the new world with new fancy fast hardware and software that can actually take full advantage of it. Windows 7 polished a lot of edges in that regard. And to do that, they had to remove quite a bit of stuff that no one really even used anymore with probably the biggest loss of all being the loss of Microsoft Agents. You know, the thing that made stuff like Clip It possible, who many people so incorrectly call Clippy, or Rover the Dog, or many others that you all just don't remember. Though maybe that's for the better, seeing how that's the feature that also gave us Bonzi Buddy and huh. Maybe I should make a video on that one day. Okay, jokes aside, Microsoft Agent really wasn't that useful at that point, and that's just one of the many legacy elements that they just got rid of because it was just kind of junk at a point. Though that did actually somewhat decrease compatibility with older software, which was a bit of an issue with 7. But beyond removing unpopular experiments from Vista, it also introduced its own batch of unpopular ones. One of the more infamous ones being Windows Live, which really kicked into gear with the release of Windows 7. Stuff like Windows Movie Maker, which was mine and many other people's first editing software, alongside many other basic tools, were no longer shipped with the software itself, instead offered by Microsoft under the Windows Live branding, which only lasted up until the release of Windows 8 in 2012. So that was worth it. Speaking of, that's probably one of the other big reasons why Windows 7 is remembered so fondly, not just because of what came before, but also what came after. There is a reason why so many schools and workplaces still use 7 for so long after the release of Windows 8 and the more improved Windows 8.1, because Windows 7 was just a thing everyone got used to at that point. 
it was that perfect balance between being user friendly and generally more usable than XP while still not throwing everyone off with all of the very weird and questionable changes that Microsoft introduced with 8 that gave it a much higher learning curve. I forgot about this, you don't even have the search right then in taskbar, you have to go into start first and then you go into search, huh. And there is so much more that was changed, added, improved, or in some cases made worse in Windows 7, and there is just way too much to cover in a single video. So now I want to know from you, what did you think of Windows 7? Do you remember it as fondly or maybe going back, did, was it all just nostalgia goggles? What are some of your favorite memories with it, or maybe stuff you didn't quite like? And maybe check out our Patreon as well, because even a single dollar a month helps us keep the memory of old operating systems alive. Plus, huge thanks to Gavin Burns, Justin Rage, Alan Vroniak, Palos Roca, Patrick Harrison, not a pseudonym, Max Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Level Up, and Robert Sanders. But anyway, that's about it, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.